and welcome to another edition of Digging Deeper with Brian Hale. Brought to you by Hale Multimedia, website and mobile app development for over 25 years. That's HaleMultimedia.com. Now listen in and join me online at DiggingDeeper.us. Our segment number four has always been one of our favorite. Mm-hmm. You know, you know the story by now. If you've been listening along, then you know. <clears throat> excuse me, that when we first got married sixteen years ago, going to be seventeen. Yep. Here pretty soon. We read this book together for the first forty days. Each chapter, there's forty chapters, and we're going through one week for you, and we are on week number eleven. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. You got the outline there. What have we been through so far, my darling? Well, so far we've talked about it's not about me. It all starts with God. You are not an accident. And what drives your life? Oh, your life is always driven by something. Living on purpose oh. is the path to peace, Yes, right? living on purpose right. is a path to peace. That was three? Yes, that was three. Okay. Number four is there is more to life than just the here and now. Number five, life is a test and a trust. And number six, this world is not my home. And number seven, it's all for him. him. Right. And now we are in purpose number one, which we are, which is we are planned for God's pleasure. And we've already talked about being planned for God's pleasure. The smile of God should be the goal of your life. And the heart of worship is surrender. That was last week. That was last week. Surrender. The heart of worship is surrender. And this week, chapter be- 11. Becoming best friends with God. Mm-hmm. That's a lot more upbeat. Well, he wants us to have a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. And what better relationship than best friends? Hey, like I said, with all the doom and gloom in segment one, two, and three, there's an answer. Here's the answer. Become best friends with God. <laughs> What's it say in Romans, sir? Since we were restored to friendship with God by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies... We will certainly be delivered from eternal punishment by his life. Romans 5.10. Mm. So we are reading the book. And isn't yes. it nice that we can read from a physical book? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm. God wants to be your best friend. Your relationship to God has many different aspects. God is your creator and maker, Lord and master, judge, redeemer, father, savior, and much more. But the most shocking truth is this. Almighty God yearns to be your friend. (laughs) In Eden, we see God's ideal relationship with us. Adam and Eve enjoyed an intimate friendship with God. There were no rituals, ceremonies, or religion, just a simple loving relationship between God and the people he created. Unhindered by guilt or fear, Adam and Eve delighted in God. And he delighted in them. (laughs) We were made to live in God's continual presence. But after the fall, that ideal relationship was lost. Only a few people in the Old Testament times had the privilege of friendship with God. Moses and Abraham were called friends of God. David called a man after God's own heart. And Job, Enoch, and Noah had intimate relationships with God. But fear of God, not friendship, was more common in the Old Testament. Then Jesus changed the situation when he paid for our sins on the cross. The veil in the temple Mm. that symbolized our separation from God was split from top to bottom. Top to bottom. As proof that God did it. Ah, indicating that direct access to God was once again available. Mm Mm-hmm. Unlike the Old Testament priest who had to spend hours preparing to meet him, we can now approach God any time. The Bible says, now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us in making us friends with God. Friendship with God is possible only because of the grace of God and the sacrifice of Jesus. All this is done by God 
who through Christ changed us from enemies into friends. The old hymn says, what a friend we have in Jesus. But actually, God invites us to enjoy friendship and fellowship with all three persons of the Trinity, our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. The word for friend in this verse does not mean a casual acquaintance, but a close, trusted relationship. The same word is used to refer to the best man at a wedding and a king's inner circle of intimate, trusted friends. In royal courts, servants must keep their distance from the king, but the inner circle of trusted friends enjoys contact, direct access, and confidential information. That God would want me for a close friend is hard to understand, but the Bible says he is a God who is passionate about his relationship with you. God deeply desires that we know him intimately. In fact, he planned the universe and orchestrated history, including the details of our lives, so that we could become his friends. The Bible says he made the entire human race and made the earth hospitable with plenty of time and space for living so we could seek after God and not just grope around in the dark, but actually find him. Knowing and loving God is our greatest privilege, and being known and loved is God's greatest pleasure. God says, if anyone want to boast, they should boast that they know and understand me. These are the human things that please me. It's difficult to imagine how an intimate friendship is possible between an omnipotent, invisible, perfect God and a finite, sinful human being. Yeah. It's easier to understand a master-servant relationship or a creator-creation relationship or even father-child. But what does it mean when God wants me as a friend? By looking at the lives of God's friends in the Bible, we learn six secrets of friendship with God. We will look at two secrets in this chapter and four more in the next. Number one is through constant conversation. Mm. Well, it's hard to be a friend if you don't stay in communication, right? Friendship with God is built by sharing all your life experiences with him. Of course, it is important to establish the habit of daily devotion time with God. But he wants more than an appointment in your schedule book. Mm. He wants to be included in every activity. He wants to be there in every conversation, every problem, even every thought. You can carry on a continuous, open-ended conversation with him throughout the day, talking with him about whatever you are doing or thinking about at that moment. Mm -hmm. Good advice from Pastor Warren here. Pray without ceasing. Well, that was good advice in the Bible. <laughs> it means conversing with God while shopping, driving, working, or performing any other daily task. A common misconception is that spending time with God means being alone with Him. Of course, as Jesus modeled, you need more alone time with God. But that is only a fraction of your waking hours. Everything you do can be spending time with God. If He is invited to be part of it, and if you stay aware of his presence. Mm -hmm. I think this is when I started not closing my prayers with amen every time because it gave me the feeling that it was an open-ended conversation and that it wasn't a bye, I'll see you later type of feeling. You know? Exactly. The classic book on learning how to develop a constant conversation with God is Practicing the Presence of God. It was written in the 17th century by Brother Lawrence, a humble cook in a French monastery. Brother Lawrence was able to turn even the most commonplace and menial tasks, like preparing meals and washing dishes, into acts of praise and communion with God. The key to friendship with God, he said, is not changing what you do, but changing your attitude toward what you do. What you normally do for yourself, you begin doing for God. Whether it's eating, bathing, working, relaxing, or taking out the trash. 
Today we often feel we must get away from our daily routine in order to worship God. But that is only because we haven't learned to practice His presence all the time. Brother Lawrence found it easy to worship God through the common tasks of life. He didn't have to go away for special spiritual retreats. This is God's ideal. In Eden, worship was not an event to be attend, but a perpetual attitude. Adam and Eve were in constant communion with God. Because God is with you all the time, no place is any closer to God than the place where you are right now. Let me say that again. Because God is with you all the time. No place is any closer to God than the place you are at right now. The Bible says he rules everything and is everywhere and is in everything. Another of Brother Lawrence's helpful ideas was to pray shorter conversational prayers continually through the day rather than trying to pray long sessions of complex prayers. Mm -hmm. To maintain focus and counteract wandering thoughts, he said, I do not advise. In fact, this great multiplicity of words and prayers, since long discourses are often the occasions for wandering. In an age of attention deficit, this 450-year-old suggestion to keep it simple seems to be particularly relevant. Hmm. The Bible tells us to pray all the time. How is it possible to do this? One way is to use breath prayers throughout the day, as many Christians have done for centuries. Of course, Andy's idea was just don't say amen. Keep them going all day. You choose a brief sentence or a simple phrase that can be repeated to Jesus in one breath. You're with me. I receive your grace. I'm depending on you. I want you to know. I want to know you. I belong to you. Help me trust you. You can also use a short phrase of scripture. For me to live is Christ. You will never leave me. You are my God. Pray it as often as possible so it is rooted deep in your heart. Just be sure that your motive is to honor God, not control Him. Mm. Mm -hmm. Practicing the presence of God is a skill, a habit you can develop. Just as musicians practice scales every day in order to play beautiful music with ease, you must force yourself to think about God at different times in your day. You must train your mind to remember God. At first, you will need to create reminders to regularly bring your thoughts back to the awareness that God is with you in that moment. Begin by placing visual reminders around you. You might post little notes that say, God is with me and for me right now. Benedictine monks use the hourly chimes of a clock to remind them to pause and pray the hour prayer. If you have a watch or a cell phone with an alarm, you could do the same. Sometimes you will sense God's presence, other times you won't. If you are seeking an experience of his presence through all of this, you've missed the point. We don't praise God to feel good, but to do good. Mm. Mm -hmm. We don't praise God to feel good. We praise God to do good. Amen. Your goal is not a feeling, but a continual awareness of the reality that God is always present. That is the lifestyle of worship. Mm -hmm. Through continual meditation. So what you just went through is through constant conversation. Mm -hmm. So that's, that one was number one. This number one's number two, two. Through continual meditation. A second way to establish a friendship with God is by thinking about his word throughout your day. This is called meditation, and the Bible repeatedly urges us to meditate on who God is, what He has done, and what He has said. It is impossible to be God's friend apart from knowing what He says. You can't love God unless you know Him, and you can't know Him without knowing His Word. The Bible says God revealed Himself to Samuel through His Word. God still uses that method today. Mm -hmm. While you cannot spend all day Studying the Bible, you can think about it throughout the day, recalling verses you have read or memorized, and mulling over them in your mind. Meditation is often misunderstood as some difficult, mysterious ritual practiced by isolated monks and mystics. But meditation is simply focused thinking. 
a skill anyone can learn and use anywhere. When you think about a problem over and over in your mind, that's called worry. When you think about God's word over and over in your mind, that's meditation. Hmm. If you know how to worry, you already know how to meditate. <laughs> <laughs> you just need to switch your attention from your problems to Bible verses. There you go. <laughs> the more you meditate on God's word, the less you will have to worry about. It's a scale. Yeah. We learned it again. <laughs> and the reason God considered Job and David his close friends was that they valued his word above everything else, and they thought about it continually throughout the day. Job admitted, I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. David said, Oh, how I love your law. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about them. Mm -hmm. Friends also share secrets, and God will share his secrets with you if you develop a habit of thinking about his word throughout the day. Mm -hmm. God told Abraham his secrets, and he did the same with Daniel, Paul, the disciples, and other friends. When you read your Bible or hear a sermon or listen to a tape, don't just forget it and walk away. Develop the practice of renew reviewing the truth in your mind thinking about it over and over. The more time you spend reviewing what God has said, the more you will understand the secrets of his life and the, that most people miss. The Bible says friendship with God is reserved for those who reverence him. With them alone, he shares the secrets of his promise. You know, you reminded me in that paragraph of something that I do a lot which is a good thing and they don't always make it out to the public but they're in the drafts mm -hmm. but this is you know you don't have to actually write something about each sermon or study that you participate in or hear mm -hmm. some people simply just take notes right when you take notes that commits it to memory well what you've done for me is you take the notes in church I listen along as well. I type in notes into an article form, and some of the sermons that, I mean, our pastor never has a bad sermon. So some of the very, 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 very best, most impactful sermons get turned into articles and in our Digging Deeper blog under mm -hmm. the Christianity section. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's just a fantastic way what, what I'm doing, I guess, is meditating on what he's saying. I'm not just taking it in. Mm -hmm. And another nice thing is we love talking to our kids. They, they actually listen and we talk to our kids afterwards. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they nail it a lot of times. They do, mm -hmm. they do, mm -hmm. yeah. In the next chapter, we will see four more secrets of cultivating a friendship with God. But don't wait until next week. Start today by practicing constant conversation with God and continual meditation on his word. His word is the Bible. God's word. Meditate on it. Prayer lets you speak to God. Meditation lets God speak to you. Mm. Communi Repeat that one. Communication is a two-way street. Prayer lets you speak to God. Meditation lets God speak to you. Mm -hmm. Both are essential to becoming a friend of God. Mm-hmm. So our point to ponder today. God wants to be my best friend. Our kids talked about that in Sunday school or in their lesson this last week. Mm -hmm. Being a best friend doesn't mean anything unless it's a two-way feeling. Mm. My son told me too many people use that word and say best friend when you didn't check with the other person. Oh. It takes two people to be a best friend, so that puts a bigger meaning on this now. Yeah. God wants to be my best friend. That means it takes both your effort, my effort, mm -hmm. and God. Right. Oh, wow. What's our verse to remember? Friendship with God is reserved for those who reverence him. Ooh. Psalm 25, 14a. Reserved. Friendship yes. with God is reserved for those who reverence him. Mm -hmm. So our question to consider would be, what can I do to remind myself to think about God and talk about him more throughout the day? What can I do? Every day, every task, what can I do? Pray without ceasing, constantly think about God. 
mm-hmm. and just be thankful, 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 thankful. I just use little thanks, thanks prayers. Mm-hmm. Thank you, God, for the challenges. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, that's thank your you. habit, huh? Yeah. The thank yous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that does it for another edition of Digging Deeper. Visit our website to catch this podcast and many others anytime. You can also watch our live TV network, browse our on-demand content, read our controversial articles, or sign up if you feel led to join the cause for defending our Constitution. It's all on diggingdeeper.us. We appreciate you listening, and remember, visit diggingdeeper.us to learn more about what we're doing to bring truth to light.